how we coach our clients. I think because we are just like, we are there for ourselves sometimes that we forget to coach each other when it's time to train, you know? Oh yeah, no. I'm but, just there for ass videos. Boss, to you guys. Hello. Happy day today. International Women's Day. Did you know that? Yeah, because somebody sent me a little memes. Yeah, it is International Women's Day, but I just like to claim the whole month. So the whole month of March, don't make that face. The whole month of March is International <laughs> Women's Month. So I was making the face because we literally like celebrate all year, right? We do. Every day is National Women's Day. For every us. day is our day. But treat yourself this month. What are we doing? I, what are we going to treat ourselves? We're with? having a girls weekend. So there's oh, that. Oh, yeah. But I'm giving, you don't need my permission, but here's your permission. Treat your damn self. It is International Women's Month. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Blame hearing. Blame it on me. I've okay? been hearing some of the ladies in the studio that they've been buying like new gym clothes. And I'm like, hell yeah, do that. Like, it just makes you want to like put it on and go to the gym. Yes. I have been spending copious amounts of money on <laughs> bombshell sportswear. Oh, your new favorite. Yeah. Yes. Which I'll link all this stuff in the show notes. I wish I had a code, but I do not. Um, but not yet. I am like obsessed with their stuff and I am now a devout bombshell purchaser. So, and let me tell you, when I wear my bombshell stuff in the gym, I be feeling like a fucking bombshell. You be so. looking like one too. I be seeing you. So there's that. Yeah. I know I got a lot of um, comments on my shirt that I wore the other day. The skull one with the diamonds. It's super cute. The salty savage. Salty savage. That's my favorite. We'll I love link, it. I'll link that up as well. And glitter has a code for y'all. Code Amanda glitters. And then we also have a code for like the shirt you just had on. So. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about this shirt because we talked about it last week or no. That was the fuck your feelings. Yeah. So this is our very, very sweet friend. Put that by your mouth. Put it by your mouth. This is our very sweet <laughs> friend that makes these. Yes. You did not wake up to be a today to be a weak ass bitch. So little story on this shirt. I wore it today. I took it off because I was sweating my ass off. But there was a guy next to me on the leg extension. And I could tell he was kind of looking at me. And I'm like, whatever. I don't care. I was just trying to hurry because I got to come see my friends. That's you guys. And um, he kind of like waved me down a little bit and was like, what does your shirt say? And I was like. Something about being a, a weak bitch or something. I don't know. What does it say? And he read it out loud to me. And um, he's all, you know what? He's like, I had a really hard day at work today. He's like, but reading your shirt makes me glad I came. And I was like, see, fuck yeah, buddy. That's we inspired right. inspired somebody. Pseudo force t-shirt inspired somebody. I'll tell you so. one thing I did. I told him, I said, you know what? I have a lot of shirts that say some fucking crazy shit. And it gets me to the gym. Why? Because I want people to read my shirt and I want them <laughs> to feel a type of way. Yeah, I, I was agree. just thinking I haven't worn the show me your butthole shirt recently. Yeah, you it haven't. It to come back into the rotation. Speaking of that, I just showed you a shirt that I want to buy. It says train hard, eat ass. And I'm probably going to buy that shirt. Probably should. <laughs> I feel like it's very on brand. It's very on brand. Very on yeah, brand. Exactly. So, but anyhow, we do have a code for um, pseudo, pseudo force, force, which is boss bitch, and it gives you 15% off. So check it out. She's got some fun stuff. She's small business. I love to support her and she's a, a creative. So, you know, there's that. And Hio, <laughs> are we sponsored by Hio yet? <laughs> Have a fucking full case. So I'll link that up to you. We got all the links today. We got all the fun stuff. So yeah. we're going to talk today about some macro based stuff, contest prep, dieting. Um, you know, it's kind of a collective array of nutrition topics. Yeah. Um, that's we uh, had some questions come through. And also we do a monthly we call it coffee with coach and we do it usually the first Sunday of the month for our members. So anybody who works with us on nutrition coaching or works with us in the studio, uh, as a member, it's included for them to come and we just troubleshoot and kind of go over some, um, things that we're noticing as coaches that are recurring issues with, uh, our clients on the nutrition side of things. So we're going to go over a couple of things that we talked about there and, um, yeah, I think we're ready to dive in. You ready to dive in? I'm ready when you are. Okay. Should we start with your fun little notes here, my friend? Well, you know what? I got so many notes now, you guys. I don't know what to do. So a couple of things that I kind of want to like 
touch on, all right, is going to be tracking in your MyFitnessPal. So a couple of things that I've been seeing lately is that we're like, oh, that says shredded chicken. I'm going to use that, right? And then I see somebody putting in six ounces, but then I'm looking at the macros and it's saying it's only 11 grams of protein. So what hurt what she's getting at is like you have to be, don't be lazy when you're entering your stuff in your macro tracker. I think it's just we're not knowledgeable yet. Right. Okay. Well, we're I'm not just, learning. Yet. I'm just a dick and I'm saying, don't be lazy, okay. but, but yes, do a little <laughs> more. Where did I get this halo right now? I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're the nice one and I'm not right now. Yeah. That's fine. So, um, basically along those lines, the best thing that you can do when you're on your, my fitness pal, look through the options and the one with the green check mark is typically your go-to. Why? Because that means my fitness pal has gone through. They double checked the macros on that and they've um, confirmed it. Yes. So uh, on the other half, you know, the reason that I know that is because you can go in and you can create your own foods. Those get added to the bank. Yes. Of the my data, fitness yeah, the, pal. the database is, is if, made by users. Exactly. So if you happen to pick one of the ones where the, the user was incorrect or maybe they had a different idea of what they were doing that is going to be like putting you off on your macros. And those are the types of things that your coach, when they can see your macros, like we do on ditch deprivation is going to be able to find the, the loopholes and what we might be missing if something is going on. Right. So another little hack for that, if you type in USDA chicken breast oh. cooked, like get very specific, like USDA, that will sometimes also pull up the green check marks too. Um, I didn't so know that's, that. Yeah. And like for whatever, it usually works for obviously like whole foods. So chicken breast, whatever, turkey, um, even like rice and things like that. So if you look that up, generally you'll see the check marks there too. So those are going to be more accurate, which is important when you're tracking macros, especially if you're in a deficit and you're trying to lose weight, lose body fat. Another really good thing. If your tracker is connected to your MyFitnessPal. Your your smartwatch or your, yeah, Fitbit. Yes, whatever you might have, whether it be Apple Watch, Fitbit. I'm sure there's like a million other ones. If your exercise calories are connected, it is going to tell you to eat those back. Big no-no. What happens if we eat them back? You don't lose weight. <laughs> you stay stuck. You stay basically you say kind of at maintenance, which it's not a bad thing to be at maintenance if you are just trying to recomp your body and, you know, basically build muscle and burn body fat and change the shape. But if you're really trying to like get lean and drop some body fat, you might be stuck for a while. So we tell our clients all the time, you have to turn that off. But the problem is that the paid version of my fitness pal is the only way to turn those off. So if you're doing the free version, you just have to keep that in mind. Or just don't connect your watch to your MyFitnessPal. That's the other option too. That's what I do not do that. One thing is just as like a really good, like easy, quick tip. If you are doing chicken breast and you're doing four ounces, you're going to be somewhere in the realms of like 25 to 30 grams of protein. So if you add something in and you're like, that only says 12 grams of protein for four ounces. Not right. That's not right. Okay. So just... This is why when I open up my fitness pal, I like to tell all of my clients, we want to learn about what you're actually putting in there and what macros are in what you're eating, right? So if I turn it to the side, that is where you get all of the information, yeah, the which we talked about these um, last week on the podcast as well. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Nice little tip there. Yeah. Got any more my fitness pal hacks and tricks? Um, if you just don't have the scanning function, right? Because that's I know taken away now. Uh, I pay, okay. I know you pay, but for those that are just trying to like beat the system, you can do like a quick add function. Um, so that's an option if like you can't find something or something's not pulling up by the way that you're searching things in. You can quick add and like add in basically just the important stuff that you need to know, which is like the calories and then the, you know, carbs, fat, and, um, protein. And then you'll have that stored in my fitness pal for you. That's only as quick ad. So what I do, since we love the kitchen, K 
Okay. Fit Kitchen is our local meal prep company. They're amazing, sweet people. Um, all they want to do is take care of all of us and make us eat healthy. So what I do, because I order from them a lot and I order a lot of the same things, um, I'll go in to like, I'm going to add food onto my fitness pal. I'll go to my foods and I will create a food. Okay. And then what it does is ask you brand name, serving size. It's going to ask you protein, carbs, fats. It's a whole list of all the things of the macros and the micros that you need. However, you know, the ones that I'm most important that I need to know, protein, carbs, fats, calories. Yes. And I think they actually might have some of their meals in there too. Like some of their Oh, meals. I've added so many. Yeah. So yeah. so you can So find if you them guys can find them, they're on there. Yeah, super helpful. Super, super helpful. So let's kind of shift gears a little bit. We talked some on our Coffee with Coach about um fueling your training for like optimal performance and, you know, essentially what that looks like. We talked about that because a lot of our clients will come like flying into a session and they're like, ah, oh, you know, it's 4 PM or 5 PM and I haven't eaten since 12 o'clock at lunch or whatever. So we talk about the importance of pre-workout nutrition and we stress that a lot because can't tell you how many times I've had somebody, you know, and, and her as well. And we're like, what's up with you today? <laughs> <laughs> Why like, are you, you usually eat enough? Yeah. You, you, you usually like have five plates on each side of the leg press and like, we're barely at three and you're dying today. Like what's up? And like, granted, there can be so many factors for that sleep time of the month stress. There's so many potential things, but we want to make sure your workout nutrition is taken care of. Three key areas are making sure obviously your pre-workout nutrition, hydration, and then, um, post-workout is important as well. So for pre, uh, something with protein and carbs is usually what we try to nudge our clients to, to get in prior to training. Worst case scenario, at least having some kind of carbs before training 20 to 30 grams is a good like rule of thumb. Everybody's a little bit different. It really depends on your goals, but just as a blanket approach, 20 to 30 grams. I had two chocolate rice cakes today. And the funniest part is that I was eating them in my daughter's bed. So I hope she finds crumbs. <laughs> this was your pre-workout. My hell, the, ta the tables have turned. Yeah. See, that's what she gets. <laughs> yeah. um, so just something, it doesn't have to be like, we talked about this too, because, and we say it often, like everybody's a little bit different. You know, Alicia can eat a full on like five course meal and like 10 minutes later go and do like a heavy leg day and be totally fine. I'm a bitch about shit. She had a mediocre meal the other day before our leg day on Saturday, and I didn't think she was going to make it. I was like, I don't feel very good. I should <laughs> not. Have, I don't even know what we ate. I don't even remember. Your beautiful sandwich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was, yeah, it was so good. And, but I know what the problem was, is that it was heavy on dietary fat. And I always tell people, don't eat fats before training. You know, it slows down your digestion a lot. And it's, it's heavy in your gut. And the sandwich I had was like sourdough toast with a, schm a sh smattering <laughs> of avocado oh. and also, Oh yeah. Some, I had a bite. It was so good. And some goat cheese. And then I think it was like just plain egg whites or whatever, but like the goat cheese and the avocado, I was like, I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Not speaking of shitting her pants, but speaking of the egg whites in her sandwich, so both of our sandwiches did not come with egg whites. We asked for that extra. So if you're like, you're stuck out somewhere, you're having breakfast, like don't be afraid to switch in an egg white or, um, you know, see if you can do one egg and they can sub some more egg whites. So you can get a better protein coming from, you know, whatever your breakfast might be if it is eggs. Yeah. We do that all the time. So good. Yeah. So some pre-workout snacks. What did we talk about? We are go-to just because it's easy. Rice cakes. Yes. We literally have like rice cakes like sprinkled throughout the car, the, the studio, the backpacks, like everywhere. There's always going to be some sort of a snack just in case we're about to have a sh an accident or, right. or we need to do some random acts of fitness. Which happens all the time. And sometimes, you know, I'm running around or whatever, and we usually or always meet up to train and I'll be like, yo, you got anything? And she's like, pulls out, I don't know, whatever <laughs> flavor of the week it is, you know, apple, cinnamon, chocolate, it doesn't matter. So a couple rice cakes is super easy, super simple. No excuse to not just have that in your car ready to go. 
some other ones, you know, if you, you can just have a meal really yeah. honestly, like just rice, chicken, rice, beef, um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, you know, toast is fine. Just something that you can utilize as fuel for your training. If you're a crack it on crazy, we recommend that you guys get EAAs. Mm -hmm. So crack, crack it on crazies are those that roll out of bed like stupid o'clock yeah. to train before the birds are even up. Yeah. And a lot of people will try to do that fasted. And we usually recommend trying to get some, some carbs in there and then some EAAs. If you don't want to have anything too heavy, you just kind of like want to get something in and go. I was actually talking to a client in the studio today and she's pretty new to ditch. I mean, she's been dieting for a while, so she kind of gets the fact of meal prepping and all of that. But what we've really been noticing lately um, is because we've been timing her food. She said that she feels better when she has heavier carbs after her training, which she's a, she's a crack it on crazy and then lighter carbs for dinner. Oh yeah. And everyone's a little bit different. So you just have to play around with that. But some things you want to try to avoid, like I did on Saturday before our training, um, because we found this really great little, I almost like don't want to tell people cause I love it and I know. it's so yummy, but, um, I think it's called good day Lu Lucille or good morning Lucille. It's this wonderful yes. little like, uh, mom pa cafe that's here in town. It's so freaking good. But that, that meal was high in fat and high in fiber. So those are two things you want to try to avoid pre-workout. Um, because like I mentioned, they'll slow down your digestion and can cause you like some, some gut <laughs> upset. So be careful with that. So just, uh, try to keep those like post-workout and away from your training. So you're not dealing with that in training. Yeah. I mean, like for me, if I'm having a meal, I space it out a little bit farther than if I was going to have a rice cake while I'm walking into the gym. Yes. Little of a difference. That's just my preference for my, my typical workout, but everybody can choose. And then I think one of the really great things too, is that when we start getting people that don't eat breakfast to eat breakfast, they notice that they start feeling better throughout the day. There's no like, you know, slump on their way into lunch and then they have lunch and then they feel even more like sluggish and slow. Yeah, it's, it's certainly helpful. So, um, so definitely getting in some pre-workout, uh, you know, carbs is, is very helpful. And then we have hydration is super important, you know, pre-training during training, post-training, you know, I can't stress this enough. We have so many dehydrated clients that are coming in and I'm like, how much water have you drank today? <laughs> I did not have I'm water like, with bitch, me during your my muscles workout. are screaming right now. Your whole body is like, you know, you're like shriveling up in the inside. So like the SpongeBob when he, the water goes away. Yeah, pretty He's much. All. Yeah. He, that's what I'm like. I can't, you know, <laughs> don't use that for the thumbnail, please. N I might, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, staying hydrated throughout the day. It's, you know, it's such an underrated tool for, training, like life in general. We talked about this on, um, Sunday's coffee with coach where I was like, I've been drinking a ton of water. Like it's the primary beverage that, you know, I gravitate towards for everything. And, you know, if you get into that habit, it's not so bad and you can make it fun and fancy and try to play around with different things. If you want, you don't, you know, Oh, water's so boring. I'm like, grow up Pers <laughs> perspective is everything my friends um some really silly kind of hack that i've apparently bestowed upon the studio oh, or at least some of my share some of my clients is the 33 ounce bottles of water are seriously easier to kind of drink quickly from costco yet yeah. Yes. I mean, anywhere yes. there's, you can have any kind of water that comes in like a 30 ounce water bottle. But I, I will say I've definitely had some clients, some athletes be like, you know what? I was really struggling with my water, but knowing that I need to have like three or maybe four of these in a day, um, has really made it a lot easier. Yeah. Cause it's just, you don't have to worry like, Oh, how many times have I filled up this Yeti or whatever? Right. Right. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that because I ordered Instacart couple days ago. And this morning I was like, I went to go cause I order those every week. It's just because I'm like, they didn't have it's any. easy. And I just know that I have three of them. I'm good to go. No, they charged me. I went and I'm like, Oh, oh a wait, remember a putting wait that fee. Oh no, they charged me, but they didn't deliver them. Oh, so I'm like, where the fuck are those water bottles? I'm like looking around. Nope. Nope. They didn't come. So I 
you know, filed my little Instacart claim, but they're so handy and so convenient that it's just like a habit now. And I, I love having them around. Sometimes I just carry a whole case in the back of the Jeep. It's I've done that. And then I'm like, bloop, that's mine. Yeah. So point moral of the fucking story is (laughs) drink your water, (laughs) drink your water, try to drink before (laughs) you train during, you know, after, you know, if you want to be kind of extra, like we, you know, really encourage trying to get some EAAs during your training, um, essential amino acids. Um, uh, people are always like, what are your, you know, which ones do you prefer? What's your favorite? I like HD muscle just because their products taste good and their ingredients are great. Uh, ghost also makes really great tasting products. So those two are generally like my go-tos just because flavor is great. Um, Thorn makes an excellent one. Thorn is my favorite when it comes to supplementation. They're more like a designer supplement line. Uh, they're but like bougie. They're a little bougie. bougie. Up. But the flavor is not the greatest. But, you know. Oh, I, you know what? I had the yellow. The lemon lime. Yes. It's. I was like, if I was taking a shot. Yeah. It would be fine. Yeah. But like, like a little bit of a kamikaze. Yeah. But not for like enjoyment. You're not drinking that and be like, oh, but you don't drink that. a kamikaze for enjoyment. I might. No. <laughs> what happens after is what we're enjoying. That's yeah. for sure. Oh, okay. Got you. So sip on your water during your workout. You know, you want to stay hydrated and, uh, and that also will help with recovery. So post-workout recovery, post-workout snacks. If you're like in between meals, uh, essentially the same thing that you have pre-workout, you can have post-workout, but you can also, this would be a great time if you wanted to have some dietary fats or things with fiber, um, post-workout. I tend to like to have more of my heavier proteins post-workout. So more of like my beef meals, more like if I was going to do potatoes and things like that, those would be the, um, choices that I would have would be post-workout. They sit a little bit heavier post-workout and it's just a little slower digesting versus trying to have that pre-workout, you know? We feel like it it sits longer. It sits longer. For the hunger monster for, that's coming. Correct. Yeah. Yes. But also some other really good ones are like protein shakes, um, protein powders. It's not my favorite. It's not, but in a pinch or for those that are just like, they, listen, me and Glitter, we can eat six meals a day, like meal meals, <laughs> not like- <laughs> Three meals and two snacks. Like we are some hungry bitches. I'm like, can we do a 10,000 calorie challenge sometime? <laughs> I feel like we should before you go into prep. <laughs> I'd be down. I'm ready. Yeah. I bet I could beat that. You probably could. You could probably do 20 actually. But, you know, so for friends of ours that are listening, that they struggle with getting in a full meal, doing a whey protein shake, whey isolates, my favorite. It's just a little less, you know, challenging with people who are, have dairy sensitivities. Why? I can't Hi, make that's words. Me. That's make, me. I'm trying to make words right now. Mm. Um, so that's an option. Um, protein bars, not my favorite, but that's also something too. I just, they're somebody I was, uh, somebody. they are my favorite. Let's re- <laughs> rephrase. That. I was like, Oh, you like candy bars, huh? You like candy bars? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is. It's it a is. bodybuilder candy bar. It is totally a bodybuilder <laughs> candy bar. You get some protein. In I there. was talking it's to somebody and I, she was like, okay, she's like a week out from vacation right now. And she's like, okay, what else can I do? And I'm like, listen, the last thing you can do is take out sugar-free things. And I was like, protein bars, gotta go. And she was like, <gasps> I, know, I didn't I know. even know. Sad day. I'm yeah. actually getting some samples. I think they might be here today or tomorrow from built. So Are those, you uh, still not being abstinent or what? I'm staining. I'm, I'm, I'm abstaining from purchasing protein oh, bars. So gifts. But I will take gifts. <laughs> if anybody wants the studio address, you can sh- send me a case of built bars, but, um, I'm getting some samples and, uh, we'll see because I tried the animal cookie one. The little sprinkles. I remember I'm a sucker for sprinkles. Y'all. I know. So am I. Yeah. So Can't anyhow, but, uh, Yeah. We'll link up all these fun things we're talking about too. So you protein, why protein is essential for building and repairing muscles. So you're going to want that pre and post workout. That is what is going to grow the muscles to give you shape. We are like protein. I don't know where, what are pushers? Yeah. We're like protein pushers. We're like the protein dictators. We're like the drug dealers of protein. We like really, (laughs) I'm just, it's like, I don't know, like dare to keep your kids on Protein. protein. <laughs> okay. I literally teach my kids that. I do. I do. Yeah. They're like, is this protein? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, you're going to get some big muscles. Yeah. 
All eat right. your protein. Yeah. And then the carbs are going to give you the energy, obviously, for the training. And then post, you know, pre and post, but they're going to help replenish the glycogen stores in your muscles. So that's why you want that for your goals, for your fit goals. So complex carbs are our favorites because they're a single ingredient. So whole grains, you know, single ingredient items, rice, potatoes, um, anything rice-based cereal. Those are always easy to rice checks, oh, rice yeah. krispies, protein cereal. Y'all that was like the big thing on Sunday when we did the, the, the zoomies. Somebody was like, I don't know why I didn't even think about that. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's life. Yeah. Uh, protein cereals. For those of you that are like, what are you talking about, Amanda? Tell us what that is. Yeah. Tell oh. us what that is. Oh, I thought you were going to do it. Okay. No, go ahead. So <laughs> if you're being good, you're going to be getting some like rice checks or some rice krispies. Okay. These are not the what, sugar ones. Why do you get in the honky tonk accent? <laughs> because that's where I'm from. Okay. I'm from if you, if you gonna If you're going to be good. <laughs> Go ahead. I love you. Because I get excited. (laughs) All right. That's why people love you. That's fine. (laughs) All right. Yes. Anyways. Protein cereal. Are you ready? I'm ready. Give it to me. Are you going to interrupt again or can I do it? (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) All right. Cereals. Okay. I'm going to pretend to be smart. (laughs) Cereal. You're going to get a plain ass cereal. Why? Because that is going to be easily digested. It's not going to add any sugar. Okay, and all you're going to do is you're going to add your protein shake on top. If you want, here's the here's the other one not to interrupt, but I'm interrupting because that's what we do here is um, you can just shake up your protein shake with some almond milk or water uh-huh. and then just have your bowl of cereal, plain checks or plain Rice Krispies and throw some like stevia on it or some cinnamon or What's oh yeah, that company that makes all the seasonings. Um, Flavor God. Yeah, they have like chocolate donut, um, gingerbread cookie. I'm they gonna have, tell like, you, sweet ones. Not a huge fan of those on my cereal. Yeah, but I do put them on my rice cakes, and they're good in oatmeal too. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think considering you're putting in like a milk or like a waterish kind of thing, it's mm-hmm. it's kind of weird in the in the. Yeah, it makes it kind of soup. gritty or something. Yeah. It gives it some texture. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you have the macros for it and you don't lose your shit, you can always get s'more cereal and put chocolate protein over the top because it's delicious. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So those are great ideas. Some other post-workout snacks too. We're just kind of riffing on some things here is an underrated one that I forget about often is Greek yogurt. Oh, I love Greek yogurt. And also like post-workout is a great time to have fruit. You know, it's never like, there's never like a bad thing. I'm not going to sit here and demonize fruit, but if you're trying to be like really strategic with your meal partition or your, um, nutrient partitioning and meal timing and all that, a great time for you to have fruit is post-workout anything sugary or, you know, any of that. So sometimes my post-workout back in the day, it hasn't been for a minute, has been like Rice Krispie treats. It's literally rice and sugar. Okay. And they're like 20 grams of carbs for a a little Rice Krispie and it's wonderful. But Greek yogurt is also another option. Berries. (laughs) You went from Rice Krispie treats to Greek yogurt. We're an eclectic group group here. This is because in ditch deprivation, there are no real rules. We want you doing like an 80-20 approach right? 80% whole foods, 20% rice, grease, if, Okay. Listen, listen, if I could control myself around Oreos, I would have Oreos every day, but two is a cock tease. Uh huh. It's just the tip. Uh huh. We, we don't play that game no more. I don't play that game. Nope. Give me the whole dildo. Give me the whole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was just looking at that right there. Yes. Yes. I got to do a whole line or I can't be doing none. Exactly. You know- So just know thyself. Like if you know yourself and you want to (laughs) have some fun foods in your house, can you exercise restraint? If you have a emotional day or a stressful day or a fight with your spouse or whatever, are you going to eat your feelings? So that's why I like, I can, yes, I can have those things. Like we can have them right when you're trying to, to diet or do whatever, but I choose not to keep them in the house because it's temptation. It's like having a lion roaming with like steaks just laying around. Being can like, we talk Don't about those, buddy? <laughs> can we talk about what is not a good snack? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about not good snacks so I can see if I agree with you. Are you ready? Tell me. Cheesecake? 
<laughs> Close. <laughs> Tell me. Nuts. Oh. Yeah. And sh- I'm aggressive about this right now. I'm sure because she's she's just saying like nuts are not bad. We no. love nuts. I love nuts. I no. love them in my mouth. I love them in my food. Have you <laughs> have you ever counted 10, 10 nuts? 10 nuts. And you're like, mm, this is such a good snack. It's so sad. I'd be like, please, sir, may I, I have some more? Yeah, I love telling the story about, and she's fine with me telling her and throwing her under the bus. But oh, one of our, I know. <laughs> one of our clients. Fasha. Yeah, Erin Fasha. She's been my longest standing client for 16 years, believe that shit or not. But she's a personal training client. And she was telling me that this was, I don't know, probably been some years now that uh, she's like, God, you know, I don't know what's happening. Like, I'm just, I feel like I'm getting weed. And then we's talking about other random things. And she's telling me that every night her and her husband snuggle up in bed and they share a bag of shelled pistachios or pistachios. And I looked at her and I'm like, do you hear yourself right now? (laughs) But they're good, right? I'm like, yes. It's a good fat. But not an entire bag of them, honey boo boo. Okay. So you have to nuts, um, nuts and nut butter are the quickest way to destroy your fat loss goals. So I, I have had bouts. I don't know if you do this where I completely have to not even have that in the house. I have a jar right now that's like been kind of sitting there and I'm not using it. So I don't buy a new one. Don't make eye contact. It's at the bottom of the jar, you know, where it kind of gets crusty, not as yummy, smooth. So I'm like, as long as I leave that in there and I don't buy a new one, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Because there's been a couple of nights where I was like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's it's a thing. Mm. So uh, so nut butters are uh, and, and nuts. I did. I did. OK, crap. let's actually let's put like a little bit of a of a cap on that. Right. Okay. So say you are you love nut butter. Maybe you have control. Okay. Oh my God. I love you. Maybe you have control. Good job. Yeah. Good 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 job. job. Okay. Now you probably shouldn't be having four to six tablespoons of that a day. (laughs) (laughs) Not if you have goals. And let, I mean, I don't know what else you're eating. If you're just trying to be happy, fucking eat the whole jar. I love you. Live your best life. I want to (laughs) go. But life is that? uh, Kate says I could fuck up some peanut butter. Exactly. So this is the great. Yes. So this is the great thing about working with a diet coach. Okay. Because when you get to know your clients, because they check in every single week, you get to know what their trigger foods are, because these are conversations that you have via their check in. And like we send videos to our athletes and our clients. Right. So when I'm prepping clients for a show, if I know there is a history of a trigger food that is always like I ate too much nut butter, like I was knuckle deep in the almond butter, yeah. then I intentionally take that out of the, their meal plan. A there mo- should be none near your lips. A moment of silence for D for her nut butter, please. Hold on. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Okay. That's all you get. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it is a sad day for some of my girls when I take I get really out. sad. I get really sad. But let me tell you, my last prep when I was on poverty macros, I had my nut butters taken away and I was so upset about it. It like hurt my feelings, but it was the best <laughs> thing because it got swapped out for guess what? Nothing fun. Oh, it was coconut. Oil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was coconut oil. And right. so I had to learn to make coconut oil fun and like I ain't going to be ODing on coconut oil. Let's be real. You're not going to catch me at 2 a.m. in the pantry with a spoon in my mouth of of suntan lotion, as D calls it. Okay, (laughs) so. Yeah, I agree. You know, so that was the best thing for me because then I had no reason to be in that. And it would be a very conscious effort for me to then go into the fridge to eat peanut butter. And that would be intentionally like going off plan or binging or whatever. There is like I just had like a thought, right? Oh, (laughs) <laughs> just a small one. Okay. But I was just thinking, I was like, everything that I kind of feel like I kind of can't control is a fat. So you love fats, but you love carbs. I love fats. You just love food. <laughs> True. But I was just thinking, it's like, so um, cheese is difficult to have in my house for me. Really? Yeah. I, I, but you my, know what? I used to be that way. I'm Portuguese. Cheese, I mean, I can't lie about I have, that. I love cheese. Cheesy goodness. Give me a quesadilla and just watch me smile and be, be a happy. happy person. Yeah. So anytime you're mad at your husband, I'll just tell him to make you a quesadilla. 
<laughs> I'll be like, Dave, no, 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 no. Tell the him to go to the is... taco truck. Okay. <laughs> Chicken quesadilla. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's what I want. I have been using fat free pepper jack just one slice a day. And it's great. Like I put it in my little breakfast sandwich or I put it on um, eggs if I'm not doing carbs for breakfast or whatever. It's pretty tasty. Somebody was telling me a story about how they were trying to feed their husband some fat free cheese. Oh, yeah. And oh, what did he say? He was like, does this stuff even melt? <laughs> He's like, I don't even taste it in there. Yeah, it's mm. uh it's definitely the pepper jack, different. though. I will give you a little bit. The pepper jack is pretty good. So whenever I want to make like a burger at home that I'll do the pepper jack, I'll make sure that I do like the super lean beef. Um, and then, you know, depending on what I want on it, I always put a fried egg on it. You guys. Oh, so good. Turkey bacon Fire. for the win. Fire. I mean, real bacon. But, you know, if you're trying to be like macro friendly, turkey bacon. Yeah. I've been having Canadian bacon too. So Canadian just like bacon is also so some good other for the macros for protein. You know, you'll get a little bit of protein in some fat free cheese, not a ton, but um, Canadian bacon I've been having too with my breakfast just because I'm not eating. I am not eating six meals a day. I'm eating more like three and then like a snack of like a Greek yogurt or something later. But um, so I'm trying to get more protein in those smaller meals. So, yeah. You know, I know that this doesn't super pertain to us, but I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, yeah, I've really noticed like having super big meals has been making it difficult for me to finish mm. my meals. But then by the time she's at the next meal, she's hungry, but not enough to like eat the whole meal again. Yeah. Oh, huh. So what would our option be here just to split them up? Maybe smaller snacks. Yeah. Or in between space for timeout more a little bit and kind of see how that goes. Might be. An yeah. Option I, too. I just wanted to bring that up because I know that we don't feel that way. Yeah. But everybody's different. Everybody's different. OK. Yeah. We have a question from Instagram, which is wanting more muscle definition, but how to know if you need a deficit, more carbs or X, Y, Z help. How long have you been dieting at this set of macros or this set of calories? Are you losing weight at this point? Um, is there any cardio happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be really... If you're wanting more muscle definition, it's going to depend on how long you've been at like maintenance or in a, in a surplus. That plus how much muscle do you have, right? Okay. So wanting to see muscle definition is basically meaning you want to be lean enough to be able to see the shape of your muscle. Right. So sort of a first line of a defense for this situation would be maybe you need to try a deficit first if you not are, haven't had one or not in one and see, right. Because this is what happens when I get people who want to do a show, right. First time athlete, don't know what we're working with. Sure. They can go get skin calipered for fat, you know, body fat and also, um, you know, whatever, any modality of fat loss. The problem is that unless they get one of like the DEXA scans or something, we don't really know exactly much, how much muscle is where, how much of that is your glute muscle? How much is, you know, we have a general idea of your overall body fat. So the only way we know because people are like, oh, I don't know. Do you think I'm ready for a show? Da, da, da. I can give you an overall idea. How long have you been lifting? How long you've been training? You know, how, uh, what's your body weight and things like that. But we won't really know until we go into the deficit and we see what's underneath. Right. And so that's kind of the first step, like go into a cut, see what you've got. And if you're, you know, if you've diet, dieted down, I would say that if you're going to go into a cut and you want to be serious about it, it's best if you hire somebody to help you with that. Because let me tell you, dieting is uncomfortable. And the first moment that you're hungry, you're just going to be like, I'm hungry. I'm just going to eat. Right. When you're hiring a coach and you have a goal, you're like, oh, I have a coach. I have a goal. I'm checking in. I'm supposed to be doing a thing. I'm hungry. Go to bed. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> drink yeah. some fucking water. Yeah. That's just a side note. And that's what we do, you know, dish deprivation. But, but that would be my first suggestion. And then if you're like, okay, you look at your body as lean as you can get it or whatever in that muscle definition, and you're like, man, I really want bigger arms or I really want bigger legs or whatever. Then that's when you can start to increase your calories, start lifting and do what we call diet cycling. Like we don't put people in deficits forever and ever and ever, even if they have 200 pounds to lose, you know, I mean, 
we work with them on their nutrition, but they're not going to be like in some extreme caloric deficit forever. So you have to play mm-hmm. around with that. And there should be seasons to your fat loss. The problem is that people think they just need to be dieting all the time. And it's like, if you could just get serious for like small chunks of the year, right? Like ditch deprivation is 12 weeks. That's three months. Be serious about something for three months. Yeah. Outsource that. Try, you know, trying to do it yourself. You just fucking give in and have some fucking sleeve of Oreos, right? So if you can outsource that, then you go into a serious cut, then you can come out of that cut with your coach, work your food back up and you go through this and it's actually way better for your metabolism. Yeah. I have a lot of ladies that were working their calories up through the holidays and then they're like, okay, summer is coming. I'm like, yep, you're right. It's time to go into a cut. I've had a few of my clients for over, you know, a couple of years and uh, the way that we have changed their body with, you know, the increase and the decrease and the deficit and the surplus and all of their training. I think that's another really important thing. If you're wanting more muscle definition, the type of training, how you're training, the intensity, you know, the engagement that you're getting is going to be huge. So one thing that I've really been pushing on the training sector is don't just feel the movement or the muscle at the top or the bottom of your movement. You want to engage it before you even start. So if I'm going to do a squat, I'm going to flex my glutes. I'm going to drop down into the squat and I'm going to feel that squeeze the whole way. I'm going to squeeze it again one more time at the bottom and then all the way up to the top. If you're doing it that way, then you're optimally working your muscles and you're feeling it in the right spot. You're being intentional. Yeah. It's just a matter of constant tension. And, you know, the reality of it is, is when I started training and lifting, I did not know any of that. Oh, heck no. I had zero clue Mm -mm, about any of that. Obviously, like, because I'm passionate about it now and this is like what we do, I've obviously come to, to realize the importance of that. But so many people don't have that mind to muscle connection and being intentional about their training. And I get it. Like, sometimes I just want to go in there and like knock out a workout and be done. And to the average everyday gym goer, maybe that's just, they're just doing it as part of like a routine. It's like brushing your teeth. Sometimes you don't floss all the time, right? You just like get in there, you do it and you're out. And that's kind of how training is. But I think if you are investing in training with a personal trainer, working with an online coach who's giving you programs, you know, you want to get better at this expensive hobby. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I had no idea what I was doing when I started. What did I do? I hired a personal trainer. What happened after that? He kept teaching me things. And then I got into it and I was excited about it. I saw my body change. So then what did I want to do? I wanted to see my body change more. So what I did is just kind of like start researching things, watching YouTube videos of like other people that are training in the gym. I know it sounds really silly, but when you find somebody that you can like, even with your trainer, okay, When your trainer is showing you how to do something, you should be watching them. Like we've been training together forever. I know exactly what she looks like when she does anything. But when it's her turn, I'm watching. Yeah, we're definitely weird like that. But that's (laughs) good. Like you want a solid training partner that like... So we're good training partners for each other in the sense that we're very intuitive with each other. Like we don't have to even speak for an entire hour. We just look at each other. We have words. We like are, you know, moving planes and shit and conducting orchestra orchestras (laughs) throughout the gym. Like I'll be across the room and I'll be like, you know, sign languaging to her and she'll be like, "Eh," and she figures it out. (laughs) And then we don't even like, I'll be like 45. Like I give her fingers and we like change out with like plates and stuff like that. So we have two headphones in. Yeah, there's we no, can't hear nothing. There's no we're like we're like, you know, we're like gangsters, like rolling up in the ghetto and shooting up bitches in our head when we're training you or know? in the club or in the club. <laughs> so so we can't like leave the zone, you know, so and then God forbid one of our I love our our gym boyfriends. Well, my, my gym boyfriends, but I swear the second yeah. I have a headphone out all of a sudden someone's all up in my ear and they're trying to like have a conversation. Well, I mean, my shirt was a spectacle today. Right. Like this was a total stranger. We, like us in, a, in a, ourselves, we are conversation starters. <laughs> Just walking in, <laughs> making a whole ass scene. So we don't like, we're not how we coach our clients. I think because we are just like, we are there for ourselves sometimes that we forget to coach each other when it's time to train. You know? Oh yeah, no. I'm but, just there for ass videos. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but she is definitely, it is good that sometimes like we aren't on the same like energy path. So oh, like yeah. she will be a 10 usually 98% of the time. And I'm like usually a five or a six <laughs> naturally. And so she's usually pushing me and, and having me, you know, increase stuff. But then there has been days when it's been the opposite, but it works really well because when she's in prep or I'm in prep, the other one is not prepping and that is on purpose. Another and thing. We help the other one out. You know what? I was just talking to somebody else. I've been talking to a lot of people. That's what you do. God damn it. Okay. So I was talking to somebody else and she was like, I just don't know why. I can't get myself in the gym. So she has like, um, you know, squat racks and things at home. So she can get a, a pretty good workout at Does home. Does she use them? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So she's using them, but she cannot get herself over whatever that block is to get her in the gym. So what she did is she made a date with her accountability buddy. They're going to go to the gym, I think like today or tomorrow, right? And they're going to like be together. And I was like, okay, what that's going to do is it's going to break the ice, right? Like we had to do this recently with me. I was having a, a hard time getting to the gym. Weird. I know. So it was like an icebreaker. So I think what this is, is it's going to be an icebreaker for her. But what I also told her, which is what we've been doing this week, is even if she's not going, tell her or him or your dog, probably not your dog, but um, <laughs> tell somebody that you're going to go to the gym at this time and you would appreciate it if they would hold you accountable, check on you, whatever, right? Because like the last couple of days for us, we haven't really been able to train together. We've been really busy. Um, and so like this morning I was just like, did you already train? She's like, yes. And I'm like, cool, perfect. I'll go later. So we are still accountable to each other, even though we're not there at the same time. Yeah. And if, you know, not, I mean, this is an entirely probably podcast episode, which is like, I think I probably have done this one, which is like gym intimidation where you're, you're intimidated oh, to get yeah. into the gym and all that because n not to get all sappy right now, but like one of the main top reasons why I even have this business in fitness, this podcast, everything about it is because I was that girl that went into the gym with my sister, I think for the first time into the weight room. I can remember it like it's bringing me to that moment in my body right now, the whole experience. It's almost like uncomfortable, okay, <laughs> of going into the weight room of the in shape on gear road in Turlock, which is no longer there. And mind you, I had like dabbled in and out of weight training and stuff in high school and like PE class and stuff like that, but like actually physically going in and trying to act like I knew what the fuck I was doing. And I had a sweater tied around my waist, a gigantic t-shirt on my CD Walkman. And my sister was like looking at me like, okay, um, you're in charge here, right? <laughs> and we're on the Smith machine trying to figure it out and looking stupid. So my like advice to you is if you're like this particular client, just pick three things, three things, three exercises that you're going to do when you go in and that's it. If you feel frisky and you want to do more, great, but just challenge yourself to do three things. And if you're freaked the fuck out and you're like, I don't even know what to do, then just plan that. Don't go in without a plan. You're not going to get in your car and try to drive to China without a map. <laughs> you, like when you, as a, as a woman, personally speaking, walking into the gym for the first time into the weight room, not, not the treadmill or the elliptical. Right. I'm like, what the hell are all these machines and what the fuck do they do? right? Like terrified. So it wouldn't make sense for me to go in there and expect to know what to do. So if you're not going to hire a trainer, then go in, do your research, just be like, um, weight training exercises for women do, 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 beep, beep, boop, boop on internet pops it up. going to find those machines and then go. But I would say hire a personal trainer and you know, that, once you get in the there, route. once you get in there, don't be afraid to read the machine. Sometimes there's been that. times that we've been like, what the hell is this thing? How does it work? Right. Because we travel a lot together. And so we end up training a lot together. Mm -hmm. And we personally love new gyms. Like I love it now. It used yeah. to freak me the fuck out, like probably even six or seven years ago. But now like that was one of my, that was one of my retirement goals. I don't know if you knew Remember that. when we went to <laughs> Vegas and we were mad that we were doing upper body when we went to Dragon's Lair? Yes. Because we wanted to do lower body. Yeah. We wanted yeah. to play with all the toys there. So they had so much stuff there. So when we go in, sometimes naturally we don't know how the hell a machine works. So I'm like, 
uh, it's a fucking hamstring machine. So let's fucking figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. And we just look stupid for a minute and it's fine. And sometimes a nice little gym patron will come over and help. Most of the times they don't because yeah. they're just like, okay, do your thing. And uh, we figure it out. Yeah. I mean, another thing too with that is like, I'm small for most machines. Like I yes. look like I'm a kid in a high chair most of the time. So it's like, I have to really figure out how to change all of these machines so they fit me. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a whole nother thing in itself. So just take your time, read the instructions. What's an example of like three movements you would go in, three machines if, if you were I a beginner? Was, if I was a beginner, if I was a beginner person in the gym and I was wanting to do like, let's just say you're like, I don't care if it's a lower body, upper body day. I just want to do three things. We're going to go three full exercises, right? Uh -huh. So I would say probably a leg extension just because it's a supported machine where you don't have to figure out about a bunch of bell and whistles, right? So it's going to work your, your thighs, your quads. So I'd say probably a leg extension. I'd probably pick, um, some kind of back exercise. And usually like, I'm trying to think of the most simple back exercise machines at the gym is going to be, yeah, a seated, a, a seated row machine. And then I'd probably pick one, like, uh, I'd, it depends if you're fine with like, um, doing like lunges or something like that, I would maybe try like a Smith machine. So this is the squat machine that has the bar that moves up and down. It's like fixed in it's the machine sliders. Um, that is going to be your best bet when you're first trying to work legs anyways. So, you know, either play around with trying to figure out how to do a squat on there, pretty lightweight, or if you want to be brave, trying a lunge, if you're pretty solid with your lunges. Oh yeah. But that is one of the best pieces. I know a lot of, uh, like people in like powerlifting and like functional training and shit, they totally shit on the Smith machine. And I'm like, listen, it's actually really great for hypertrophy training, which yeah. is what I fucking care about. Okay. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to be a power lifter. I'm not trying to do I any mean, of that. I'm just trying to have fancy muscles. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I used to like really dislike using the Smith machine. I I'm did like, too in my powerlifting days. It's such a sissy machine. Yeah. I'm like, right? that's for weenies. Yeah. Yeah. But and it's really not because it destroys us every time. It's yeah. It, I mean, it we do it on purpose. You. Yeah. We do it on purpose. It it's forces not like you to be in a complete fixed, isolated spot for, for whatever body part you're trying to focus on. Cause you can kind of move around and make things different there on the Smith machine. But yeah, I love it. In fact, I'm going to try to get us one in the next few months at the studio because you know, I'm be, also not surprised that she a, picked two lower body exercises for her three exercises. No. Just saying. Not to mention number three was a back exercise, which she barely trains. Now. Yeah, I can't, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did yesterday. Well, because here's why I would pick, I would, if I was going to go in and just do full body, I would want to make sure I was picking, you know, probably if it was going to be three exercises, full body, I would want to pick larger muscle groups because they're going to be the most calorie expensive, right? As far as using yeah. and, and making the most difference and impact in all so many areas, right? Not just like, I'm going to go in and work on biceps, bet you, triceps, and I'll bet you there's shoulders. people that would have cho chosen that as like a third exercise. Uh, what? The bi like a bicep curl. Yeah. yeah. Which, mind you, okay, but like what she said, if you're going to be going in there and you're just going to be getting in three exercises, you want to get them the biggest bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you're going to do it. Like whenever I am training a lower body day, I burn two times, at least two to three times the amount of calories on those days than I do on an upper body day. Totally. So yeah, that was not nutrition related, but I felt ho hopefully is helpful. It's, it's to the question we had the oh. one before. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> So <laughs> next question, I don't, I think this is a typo, but I'm not, I think how I feel, ethnic can yeah. you get with your food on prep? My stomach I'm like, does so I wish anymore. this person is on here. I want to know. know what kind of food, um, if you, if this is you answer the question, <laughs> <laughs> let us know. Um, what would be ethnic? Let's guess. I mean, I'm sure that just, I'm assuming that means like what types of like herbs and spices and things you can use. So you can. I mean, I'm not speaking for every coach, but pretty much like most herbs are going to be totally fine. It's going to depend on what things you're adding. So if you're adding like creams and sauces and butters and anything oh, that yeah. contains calories, yeah. then you're going to have issues with achieving your prep goals. 
And, you know, the other thing too, is if you can't handle oatmeal, you should tell your coach, you know, with my clients, I strategize their, uh, meal preps a little differently. We start with macros on purpose because as I coach them, I start to see trends in their nutrition and I can see what they typically lend, like lean towards as far as what they eat. And then when it comes time to do a meal plan for prep, I will tell them, okay, I want you to track this week with the intentions that we are going to be on meal plan next week. So I'm going to be looking at your foods this week to kind of get an idea of how I want to map that out. Obviously within reason, if you're adding in, you know, Oreos Pop or whatever, that's not going to be on there. But for your whole foods, that's how I'll structure their diet. So I'm not giving them tilapia and which I will never, I do not ever, eat tilapia ever program for a client no. tilapia. Okay. But that was just an example. You know, I'm not going to just hand somebody a meal plan and be like here and not know if they don't, you know, they can't eat those things. Like for example, D was on here earlier. I don't know if she's still here, but I were moving her diet around with some of her macros. And so I put in coconut oil instead of almond butter. And I remember she told me that probably a year ago, she doesn't do coconut stuff, but I forgot and put that in there. And she emails me back and she's like, I'll totally do it if I have to, but like, I don't want to eat suntan lotion. And I'm like, oh shit. I agree. Not a problem. So what, what do you do instead of coconut oil? Um, I did (laughs) asking uh, for a friend. Yeah, no, I did, uh, (laughs) extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Yeah. So we just swapped it out for that. But, um, but yeah, so that's just my two cents on that. I don't know if you had anything to add there. No, no. Okay. We'll take two more questions because we're kind of almost at an hour here, but let's go here. Been struggling with sleep and prep, waking up at 2 a.m. Suggestions. Uh, so one would be make sure that you are not having caffeine after, um, three after uh, <laughs> you're three. I'm three. I, as if I'm, if you're my client, 12 o'clock, 12 PM, do not have caffeine after that. And that's because caffeine lasts more that initial, the little bo- boost it gives you. It reuptakes again later, usually when you're going memes and it interrupts, uh, interrupts your sleep. So it's usually caffeine. I will have everybody pull back their like pre-workouts, you know, any of that stuff that has stimulant in it before 12, like have that before 12 o'clock. If you are continually staying up late with like the screen in your face, that's also a problem. That's also going to disrupt your sleep. So if you're, I usually say like, try to disconnect from screen time an hour before, which Honestly, is, is challenging. Are you having problems falling asleep? That's another question too, mm-hmm. that we need to know. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of time, well, sometimes a lot of time. Oh, hello. You're so good um, at that. Most of the time, like the last, I think for most of my athletes and myself personally, the last like three to four weeks are the worst sleep wise, just because you're so lean and it's, that's just the nature of the beast with, with getting super lean, but some things that do help. Yes. Um, so I've been, I've been doing, I've been telling you, I've been sleeping like a freaking dead person which is wonderful because I'm even like going some nights without getting up to pee, which is almost unheard of. And I'm no, I'm not peeing the bed, (laughs) but, um, (laughs) but I am like falling asleep and it just knocks me out. And then my alarm like goes off and I'm so freaking well rested. I'm like ready to go. I I told you I got up at five 30 this morning. I'm so ready for my days that I've been waking up like 10 to 15 minutes before my alarm. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Um, it's like clockwork, but I've been taking, um, so the cured, uh, the cured nutrition, the calm oil. So I, I will do a full dropper of this. So I don't recommend that for everybody. This is the Start extra slow str- friends. Yeah, this is the extra strength, but it is, um, full spectrum like, uh, hemp. And there is, uh, THC in this one because it is the extra strength. So I will, it says you could use it up to twice a day. I just do it once because it makes me so like mellow, relaxed, and just like ready to unwind down into Mimi land and like pass out and have a wonderful night's sleep. So that is an option. I do not suggest melatonin at all. So stay away from melatonin. It makes me itchy, bro. Yeah. And then, uh, some like L-theanine is also very helpful. 5-HTP? 5-HTP is also really helpful. I got one. There are some teas that are really great as well. So there are some- Sleepy time tea. Sleepy time tea. Chamomile has been shown, like the actual herb chamomile to help with uh, that calming effect. And then there also are some other sleep teas that have some other like herbs and stuff and then that help you get into a nice deep sleep. But then you're you're also battling with the teas like 
drinking that before bedtime, you know, you probably will have to get up to go potty. But, but I try to keep all of the like sedative stuff that you would want to take for that, like the melatonin or like sleeping pills, you know, out of, um, out of you if, if possible, try to like do it in the most natural way possible. So, um, somebody asked if you should be tracking CBD and THC gummies. Yeah. Most I mean, likely. Yes. Especially depending on, you know, what your macros are, where they're doing all of that. And then, um, you know, like I was talking to Jody the other day oh, yeah. and we were talking about the treats, right? Because like there's a little store around the corner from our studio. We all kind of go there. They have all kinds of things, right? Yeah. Let's plug Jaden's journey. Jaden's journey. Yeah. Actually, if we're talking about, um, I did get the. Do we get a promo code? Hey, if anybody knows Jaden's journey. I bet I could get <laughs> Can one. Can we get a promo code? I bet I could. <laughs> we um, send all the clients there. I know we do. We're like around the corner. So um, actually they do have like a nighttime sleepy time one and it's been amazing. It's a great too. Um, but where was I going with that? Uh, macros. Oh, and- oh yeah. <laughs> so when you go there, right, you can get like these little Reese's. Oh, THC little candies. Mm-hmm. They're better yummy. than the real thing. Oh, wow. I'm the gonna inside, try that. Me and we were like talking about these and the inside of that is the best peanut butter I've ever had. Somebody was asking. Yeah, I know. Let's tell um, them. What is the brand of the CBD? So I'm going to bring this up to the Instagram screen, but it's uh, Cured Nutrition. So it's called Calm Oil. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, this is the extra strength. Beware. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's, yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, I'm not taking it for like flavor. I mean, it just goes right under your tongue and it's wonderful. Um, and I believe for those, I, I believe usually leave boss them. bitch gets you, I think it's 10% off and free shipping, but oh. don't quote me on that. I will link it up in the show notes for you, but yeah, boss bitch will also get yeah, you. Yeah. Whenever you take those, you guys, you should let them sit under your tongue for like a little bit. Yeah. Like I usually do a minute just cause a I whole like, minute. I want to like get that in there. I want to saturate that. What do you do for the minute? I just walk around and let my mouth salivate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last question. And we're going to let you guys go. It's almost time. Oh, um, and this is a great one to wrap up with. So I like it. What is ditch deprivation? Ditch deprivation. You know, in a nutshell, I kind of feel like it's your way to learn about nutrition and become better at some of the things that you may not know. So the thing I think that is really important about ditch deprivation is it starts you where you are. Like I would never tell, be somebody's coach. They come to me and say, I've ne- I haven't worked out in six years. And then I would not be like, okay, I need you to work out five days a week. And I need you to eat all these foods and all of that. So I think the really great thing is with a coach on ditch deprivation, you are getting all of our knowledge of what the things that we've already done that didn't work. Yeah. It's, we've already done all the fucked up shit. <laughs> True. Uh, okay. But in a professional light, I mean, she's not wrong. We it's, tw- it's 12 weeks of like, you know, you'll work with one of the coaches on our staff. It's a diet coaching program, but you don't necessarily need to have like want to lose weight. We, I have a client right now who's trying to gain weight. Yeah. Um, you've had that instance too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have people that are like, yeah, I just want to, I just want to be like buff as fuck. So like, help me get that with my nutrition because I'm not getting anywhere. So there's really a few different options. Uh, and we've, I mean, we have a client right now who's, I think she's, Yolanda's she's 65, something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we, I mean, we have clients like in their sixties that are doing this online program, you know, because I know a lot of people are like weird about online shit and they're like, Oh, you know, is that really work? You know, working with a coach online? Like, yeah, (laughs) it does. I actually have a client. I have a couple clients in their sixties right now and I've never met them. They're in other States. Yeah. I mean, the thing about this is it's not just texting back and forth. It is a full platform with all kinds of information and hacks and, you know, guidelines and things like that. So if you're interested in really learning how to like be healthy, eat healthy, eat for your goals, you know, um, stay accountable. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And I mean, there is, so you work with your coach every week. So, you know, you'll check in, you'll send progress photos to either Amanda, Alicia, or Monica, and your coach gives you a custom tailored program, your own instructions. Um, you can email them, chat with them, you know, 
if you need anything, have any questions, they'll assign you your macros or they'll give you a meal plan, whichever you prefer. And every week you check in, you have a series of questions. You know, your coach is going to give you some goals and some things to work on that are not just lose five pounds this week. It's like, (laughs) it's like, okay, you're going to increase your sleep. You're going to increase your steps and we're going to work on your water. Right. And it's little chunk bite size habits that like people just forget about that are important when they're trying to be healthy or like lose fat that like over 12 weeks, you start instilling these habits. And then hopefully you continue going after that and you continue to learn more things and just be better equipped to like have a, you know, a healthy lifestyle. And there's a ton of how many freaking resources have we created for that portal? I mean, I've, so many. I've made so many things. I can go back and read them. Yeah. And there's, um, you know, I was sitting with Monica and we were talking about our nutrition clients and she's like, you know, those fast food meal plans have been so helpful for two of her girls because one of them literally lives on fast food. I, I caught a soft taco. Yeah. Somebody's. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I thought we talked about Taco Bell. Yeah. I thought we talked about that. So what, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, we want you to be able to have flexibility and be armed with the knowledge to make better decisions and also have somebody hold you accountable to making those better decisions. So if you're going to Taco Bell, did you get a nachos bel grande uh-huh. or did you get a chicken taco? Correct. Right. Like then that way you should be like, okay, great. At least you made a better decision. Right. It's like, you know, it's just baby steps. So anyhow, that's going to be open. So, um, I'll link that up in the show notes for you to actually, by the time the podcast airs, it will be open for enrollment. So just Ooh, kidding. Yeah. But the program is open now. So if you'd yeah. like to work with one of the girls, um, either find us on Instagram or you can click the link in the show notes. Yes, this is going to be a podcast. Okay. I said no more questions, but let's just do one more snack time. It's snack time. Okay. This is actually a good one. Wait, wait, wait. What's that say? Wax. Oh, sorry. I thought that said something else. How many days before a show should I get a wax? I would definitely, if you, well, you should definitely get waxed a couple times before, before your show just to make sure you do not have a reaction and your skin gets used to that process. But let's assume that you already are getting waxed. Then you should probably, if your show is on a Saturday, I would say Monday. Is Monday? Monday, Tuesday. I feel like Tina tells us Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Well, I mean, it also depends on how fast your hair grows. I mean, I'm fine. I could do it on Monday now because I've been getting waxed for two years now. Right. But, um, but yeah. And get that Brazilian ladies, get that booty hole. Your butt hole too. You don't want to be seeing butt hairs on stage and you will in that tiny itty bitty baby bikini. What did you want the question to say? I th- I thought it was going to say, how many days will it take me to get ready for a, a contest? That's what I thought. Oh, the question said. oh, and did you see my face? Yeah. I was about to get tangent. I was like, okay. I was about to get super <laughs> tangent. So yeah. Somebody asked about the calories in the cured calm oil. It, there's no, there are no calories on, um, on here, but I don't think it's because there aren't calories. It's just their supplement labels are regulated by like serving sizes. So if it's not enough to make a certain amount of calories, they won't post it. So they I'm, don't have I'm to. not going to tell you there are not calories in here. So I would maybe hit up the website. Okay. We're going to have to cut out now. Bye. Okay. Thanks for listening. Yeah. If you guys want to do ditch deprivation, let us know. Yeah. Check it out. Let us know. And we'll hope to see you soon. Bye. Boss Thank you for listening to Boss Bitch Radio. It would mean the world to me if you could rate and review the podcast. If you could give us a five-star review on iTunes, drop us a little comment. We will read those and we offer prizes as a ethical bribe for you to leave us some great mojo and words of affirmation. You know, that is my love language. And also, if you're over on Spotify, you can rate and review it there as well. All of this helps other women, other people, other folks see us, hear us, and learn from all of the amazing boss bitch tools and hacks and hopefully get some LOLs. And if not, if anything, if you could share this with one person, I'd love you forever. And I know you are just here for my undying love. And last but not least, please, 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 please come find me over on Instagram so we can be buddies. We can be Insta fam over there. I am Diane Flores underscore IFBB underscore pro. 
come say hi, drop me a DM, let me know what you think of the podcast. I'm always open for new suggestions and feedback as well. And I hope you listen again soon. Thank you.